In Soviet Canada, you are free to say exactly what the government lets you. Viva Fry, former Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and I stress the former Montreal litigator for reasons which will become apparent in the context of this vlog. Winnie the Westie is being very annoying. I hear a dog barking outside the window. All right, Canada has made it back into the news yet again, and yet again, all for the wrong reasons. Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, some of you may know him from his podcast. Some of you might know him from his amazing insights and predictive capabilities when looking at certain legislation that he predicted back in 2016 was gonna result in compelled speech in Canada. And lo and behold, we are damn near close compelled speech, if not already there. Well, some of you might have known that he got in trouble with the Board of Psychologists in Ontario. It's either Ontario or Canada. I think it's provincial. Is it provincial? I'll have to double check. He got in trouble with the Order of Psychologists for some mean tweets that he put out on the interwebs. The Order of Psychologists said, looks like you've had a little too much to think there, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, and you might have to go to re-education camps in terms of retraining you for proper social media etiquette. I'm not joking. They did this. There were complaints filed against Dr. Dr. Jordan B. Peterson for tweets. Complaints not filed by actual clients, patients, whatever, people who have never had any dealings with him whatsoever on a professional basis, filing complaints because they didn't like the tweets that he put out on social media. He was investigated and the administrative body responsible for imposing the rules of ethics concluded that Dr. Jordan B. Peterson needs to go to re-education camp for social media etiquette. It made the headlines at the time. It's making the headlines again now because as the National Post is reporting, an Ontario Court of Appeals basically rejected his appeal of the decision, which had been ratified by a higher court. And uh, it looks like Dr. Jordan B. Peterson is up social media shit creek without a paddle. I shouldn't have sworn. Just a brief recap of the procedural posture of this entire preposterous situation coming from the Superior Court's decision when Dr. Jordan B. Peterson requested the review of the Administrative Tribunal's decision. This is a summary of the procedural posture and the state of the file. Citation, Peterson versus the College of Psychologists of Ontario, 2023, ONSC 4685. Reasons for decision from Shabbos J. Overview. When individuals join regulated professions, they do not lose their charter right to freedom of expression. At the same time, however, they take on obligations and must abide by the rules of the regulatory body that may limit their freedom of expression. This case raises the clash between a regulated clinical psychologist's right to speak in a certain manner and the regulator's power to require the member to moderate that speech. Now, I can disingenuously harp on the seeming paradox that you have freedom of speech, but when you join certain orders and professions, you have that freedom of speech limited. It kind of does does make sense because you have to have people who represent the profession. You basically agree to certain rules. Fine. I can understand that. It's in how that restriction is applied that it becomes a problem. And in this case, as we're going to see when we highlight the tweets in question, the impugned tweets, it's something of a problem. Paragraph 9. Between January and June 2022, the college received numerous reports about Dr. Peterson's conduct on social media and in his public appearances. The reports again raised concerns about Dr. Peterson's professionalism, including whether his tweets complied with the college standards of professional conduct. The tweets and statements include the following. A. A tweet on January 2, 2022, in which Dr. Peterson responded to an individual who expressed concern about overpopulation by stating, quote, you're free to leave at any point. I'm coming back to this tweet a little later on. Don't let me forget. B. Various comments Dr. Peterson made on a January 25, 2022 appearance on the podcast, quote, The Joe Rogan Experience, end quote. Dr. Peterson is identified as a clinical psychologist and spoke about a, quote, vindictive, end quote, client whose complaint about him was a quote pack of lies end quote speaking about air pollution and child deaths dr peterson said quote it's just poor children and the world has too many people on it anyways end quote c a tweet on february 7 2022 in which dr peterson referred to gerald butts as a quote prick end quote nomen s omen the name leaves a sign yeah butts is in fact a prick some might even call him an a-hole but a bing bada boom but tis i'm out of here and when i say gerald butts is an absolute a-hole it's not just to make a joke here's a tweet from him another victory for people who don't give a flying fig about their fellow human beings, and the article states that allegedly COVID-19 misinformation cost at least 2,800 lives and $300 million, new report says, and I let Gerald Butts know as much. The headline is idiotic, the article is idiotic, and anyone who believes this nonsense is an idiot. D, a tweet on February 19, 2022, in which Dr. Peterson commented that Catherine McKinney, an Ottawa city councillor who uses they-them pronouns, was in quote, appalling self-righteous moralizing thing, end quote. McKinney uses they-them pronouns, oh my 
my goodness, I'm going to her Twitter feed right now. Anybody who uses they, them pronouns is playing a game on you to see how patient you are to put up with their garbage. That or they are certifiably mentally ill and suffer from split personality. And I'm not even saying that as a joke because there are people who suffer from split personality. And I did in fact go to Twitter after this to see what her account looked like. And it seems she's deleted it according to the pleb, the reporter. Catherine McKinney has deleted her Twitter account after losing the election for mayor of Ottawa. Goodbye, they or them, you won't be missed. E, in response to a tweet about actor Elliot Page being, quote, proud, end quote, to introduce a trans character on a TV show, Dr. Peterson tweeted on June 22nd, 2022, quote, remember when pride was a sin and Ellen Page just had her breast removed by a criminal physician, end quote. F, a further complaint about Dr. Peterson's January 2, 2022 tweet, in which Dr. Peterson responded to an individual who expressed concern about overpopulation by stating, quote, you're free to leave at any point, end quote. The further complaint provided a link to a 2018 GQ interview in which Dr. Peterson made a similar comment about suicide. G, Dr. Peterson's tweet posted in May 22nd in which he commented on a Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition cover with a plus size model tweeting, quote, sorry, not beautiful, and no amount of authoritarian tolerance is going to change that, end quote. Oh, the irony of that last one should not be lost on any of you. And what did the administrative tribunal come to by way of conclusion? It's summarized at the end of this court order, which basically ratified that administrative tribunal's decision. Paragraph 76, following that transparent and coherent discussion, the panel concluded reasonably that Dr. Peterson's behavior raised a moderate risk of harm to the public, which the panel had articulated in its decision and concluded that it was, quote, very concerned that the recurrence risk in this case was high, end quote. It therefore concluded its chain of analysis by deciding that, quote, it would be appropriate and in the public interest, end quote, to require Dr. Peterson... <laughs> I can't even say this without laughing. To require Dr. Peterson to complete an SCERP to address his professionalism in public statements. And an SCERP is Specified Continuing Education or Remedial Program as defined in paragraph two of the decision. And when I say that Canada is back in the news again and again for all the wrong reasons, it was barely two weeks ago that reporter at Rebel News David Menzies was falsely arrested, assaulted by a an alleged police officer, although he wasn't in uniform, while David Menzies was trying to ask, what's her name, Christa Freeland, a very relevant question. We made the news for that, and I'm not done yet putting that on blast, but we're in the news yet again for the wrong reasons, because Canada, the peace-loving, tolerant place where everybody's polite, eh, has turned into an absolute authoritarian regime. And if you haven't yet seen that video of David Menzies being wrongly arrested, here's that video. How come the IRDC is not a terrorist group? Why is your government supporting Islamo nationalism? You've been there. You've been there. What? You've been there. What are you doing? You're under arrest for assault. Why are you pushing me? You're under arrest for assault. You're under arrest for assault. You're under arrest for assault. Who are you? You're under arrest for assault. You pushed into me. You pushed into me. I was just scrubbing. I got my credentials here and you just bumped into me. So excuse me. Police. You're under arrest. What is your for name in your badge? What is your name second. in your badge? So you've been told you're under arrest. Why am I under arrest? And if you haven't yet seen Christian Freeland's absolutely disgusting response to being asked how she felt about that, here's that video and try not to vomit while you watch it. What do you make of your security detail uh, arresting uh, David Menzies? So, um, I want to start with what was important about Monday. And what was important about Monday, January 8th, was that was the fourth anniversary of a date that I think forever needs to be marked and circled in black on the calendar of all Canadians. Uh, it was a tragedy for Canada. Uh, Canadians were criminally murdered. And I want to say to the families and loved ones of the people who were murdered that Canada remembers, Canada will not forget. And that's why I was in Richmond Hill, Marcy was there too, to show that this is a Canadian tragedy, that Canada remembers and Canada will not forget. Um, on the incident, um, as you guys know very well, Canada is a rule of law country. Canada is a democracy. Operational decisions about law enforcement are taken by the police of jurisdiction, quite appropriately, 
political elected officials have no role in the taking of those decisions. And that's why I don't have any further comment. And now Canada is once again back in international news and once again for all the wrong reasons because Dr. Jordan B. Peterson's appeal of the Superior Court's decision ratifying the lower court panel administrative tribunal's decision ordering re-education for Dr. Jordan B. Peterson has been dismissed. Not motivated, it's a one-liner basically dismissal of it. Not surprising either because the court system tends to be deferential to these administrative tribunals which are set up specifically for the purposes of regulating these bodies so they're deemed to have the requisite experience, the requisite authority, the requisite expertise to manage, administer their own professional bodies such that the intervention of the higher court system is expected or justified only in egregious situations. So it was to be expected that the panel's decision ratified by the Superior Court would in fact be confirmed by the Court of Appeals. So Dr. Peterson, it looks like you're off to re-education camp. Let us know what it looks like. But above and beyond the egregiousness of this particular situation, and it gets a little more egregious, we're going to get into it in a second, a disarmed, very subservient, very polite population is very easy to control. And we're witnessing it in real time where one speech on Twitter is literally being deemed a moderate risk of harm to the public. Let that sink in people. You've heard the tweets. Those tweets were deemed a moderate risk of harm to the public. That's the world in which we're living. It's not just that speech is being regulated, however. It's that you've got journalists not only not covering this story or not covering it as critically as I think they should be covering it. You've got some journalists actively working as snitches for the government, for the system, and that journalist or former journalist goes by the name of Rachel Gilmore. Back on December 11th, 2022, Rachel Gilmore, I think at the time she was working for Global News, so I'll call her a journalist at the time, actually put out a tweet in which she cutesily tried to get Dr. Jordan Peterson in even more trouble by seemingly innocuously, innocently saying, hmm, I wonder if the people investigating Dr. Jordan Peterson have seen this tweet of his. Rachel Gilmore at Rachel Gilmore. I'd like to see a fuller representation of the tweets that got Jordan Peterson in trouble with the College of Psychologists. For example, this piece fails to mention whether his professional association took issue with this one. In response to a tweet from Robert Reich, whom if you don't know him is dumber than a bag of rocks. Robert Reich, Elon Musk and his enablers have turned this website into a torrent of ad hominem attacks, lies floated as jokes, and blatant misinformation. This isn't freedom of speech, it's just dangerous. To which Dr. Jordan B. Peterson replied as follows, and it's getting just impossible to find child porn, dot dot dot, with a smiley face. Now, anybody with a half a brain and or a half an ounce of intellectual honesty, which might actually exclude Rachel Gilmore, knew exactly what Dr. Jordan B. Peterson was getting at in this tweet, in that you have the likes of Robert Reich complaining about the insults on Twitter, while Elon Musk was, in fact, and continues to tackle one of the biggest problems on Twitter. But yeah, Rachel Gilmore pretends not to understand what Dr. Jordan B. Peterson was getting at and tries to flag the order of psychologists or the media to go and investigate Dr. Jordan B. Peterson even more. My goodness, in in Soviet Canada, the media doesn't report the news, the media reports to the government. And then in one of the most perfect cases of how it started versus how it's going, Rachel Gilmore, hi friends, I'm heartbroken to share I've been laid off from global news. I poured my heart and soul into the work I did alongside amazing colleagues and I dealt with some horrifying backlash for it, but I wouldn't change a thing. And getting back to that tweet in which Jordan Peterson is alleged to have encouraged someone to commit suicide. I guess it would be worth our time to read the original tweet. I disagree. Based on the record of human behavior, we are already overpopulating this small world. Any arguments I have heard for supporting such a large human population completely overlook the huge loss of species and ecosystems resulting from our self-absorbed attention. To which Dr. Jordan B. Peterson replied as follows. You're free to leave at any point. And then the complaints to the College of Psychologists. To whom it may concern, it is against every ethical standard and best practice of the U.S. National Association of Social Workers Code of Ethics to make light of, encourage, joke about, or reference the topic of suicide in a manner that is not grounded in safety, prevention, and evidence-based therapeutic intervention. I am sure that Canada's standards of professional psychology slash social work are similar. I am submitting a formal complaint, not only for Jordan Peterson's original tweet, but for the fact that he just shared it again promoting the idea that what he did was perfectly fine. Thank you for your time, Redacted. Again, to anybody with half a brain and half an ounce of intellectual honesty, which might exclude the person who filed that formal complaint, Peterson was not suggesting or making light of suicide full stop. What he was doing was highlighting the absurdity of people who currently exist, suggesting that other people should not exist, should not be brought into existence, or those in existence should be, I don't know, reduced? And after I took full cognizance of the entire chain of events, I tweeted out, my goodness, if Jordan Peterson was suggesting suicide in that tweet of his, well then the original tweeter was 
are suggesting genocide in theirs. Viva Fry at the Viva Fry. If at Jordan B. Peterson's tweet reply was a quote joke about end quote suicide, then the original tweet was a threat of genocide. And I stand by that assessment and now you know the latest of what is going on in Justin Trudeau's authoritarian Canada. My goodness, he just admires that basic dictatorship of China because they can turn the economy around on a dime and they can also shut you up on a dime. And yes, I understand that this is at the provincial level of Ontario, and therefore it might be difficult to blame it on Justin Trudeau directly, but I've got to say one thing. The poop rolls downhill and the odor floats up. It's a top-to-bottom, bottom-to-top takeover of Canada. And when Jordan Peterson warned of compelled speech in 2016 in response to Bill C-16, my goodness, he was ahead of the curve, and he is now suffering the consequences of being right. And with that said, I've got to take this very nice, patient dog to the dog run. If you like my content, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Viva Fry on Rumble, V Viva Fry on Twitter, vivabarnslaw.locals.com on Locals. And everybody, as we say, now you know your vlog. Peace out. Are we going to do this? We can't do it. Peace out. Boy.